Turns out burnout is a very real phenomenon and it's not the euphemistic burnout that I associated it with, meaning being sick of your job. In that sense, I've been in a perpetual state of burnout for my entire life. Um, burnout specifically meaning your body objects to you moving around and doing anything productive. You hit a wall and you are essentially a sick person. You are um, so depleted physically that it becomes prohibitive of doing anything of any remote value in your life. And I hit that wall hard and I want to say unexpectedly, but I should have seen it coming. And it was perhaps my relatively youthful hubris. You know, I'm in my mid thirties. I don't know how youthful that hubris really is anymore. Um, I should know better, but I didn't. So now you can know better as I did not. For context, my two main streams of income are this YouTube and doing reselling, reselling clothing, historically on eBay and Poshmark, but more, uh, more on whatnot these days, more recently. And uh, right before the burnout happened, I was hitting whatnot hard. Whatnot is the live auction app. And I was putting a ton of manpower of big, strong manpower into whatnot. And um, I've had a couple of people say that whatnot is the culprit. Whatnot is not the culprit. I am the culprit. My lack of sense when it comes to my work ethic is the culprit. And uh, as much as I inveigh against the hustle culture and the Gary Vaynerchuks of the world and the go, go, go guys, I became one of them in practice, if not in spirit. Um, I got swept up in working as much as possible, being as productive as possible at cost of my need to rest, which turns out is actually a need and not a want. I was working probably eight or 12 hours a day, closer to the 12 mark every single day for at least a month. During that time, I took one full day off and I would rest here and there, read a book for a while. So I thought that it was adequate to structure in rest time into the workday. And my life became this heterogeneous blend of work and life, and it all kind of molded together into this horrible homunculus thing of, of a work-life monster. And that is not a good thing to do, and that's kind of inevitable if you're a reseller, if you don't have a real job, that that just kind of happens. It's like a goldfish. You take a goldfish, you put it in a bathtub and it'll grow to a certain size. You put it in a lake and they, they get this big. I swear to God, if you didn't know that, that's actually true. You can catch, I can show them to you. I can show you individual goldfish in San Diego that are that big that live in ponds. So that is your workload. It expands to fill whatever container it is that you put it in. And uh, it had a really big container. All the reselling work sitting on top of that, I was putting out one of these videos on the Thrift of Life channel once every three days. And I deviated from that only twice ever, I think, during that time because I had an unpublicized New Year's resolution to get to 50,000 subs on this channel before the end of the year. And I thought that the best strategy to do that, excuse me, would be to put out videos just on a consistent, regular basis and get the linear growth with big jumps when a video would take off here and there. Um, and it, it's, it turns out to not be really the best strategy and it just kind of wore me down a little bit. Also, I have a second channel, Book Pilled, that's about reviewing books, buying books, science fiction specifically. So I was putting out videos there periodically. I had ratcheted down the amount of videos that I was putting out on that channel quite a bit. So that was just kind of an intermittent thing, but that was also running in the background. Plus I have a personal life as well. I have personal relationships to maintain. And nowhere in that amalgam of obligations did I make space for long periods of time where I wasn't working, where I was resting mentally and physically. And that is a grave error. I mean, I've already said this in this video. Uh, that is not optional. So what happened was I worked for probably four, like three or four weeks, I think it was four, without a break. And I was hitting it hard because I, I made a lot of money off whatnot the first, especially the first time I did an auction. And then subsequently I was just consistently making good money. 
and it was such a breath of fresh air. Uh, I wanted to strike while the iron was hot and make it a consistent regular thing. I was doing one whatnot auction every Friday and then inter intermittently I was doing smaller whatnot auctions to kind of uh, move different kinds of stuff other than just clothing and small clothing auctions. And uh, I was just turning the wheel, cranking, cranking, cranking. And then at the end of it, I knew that I needed a break and I was confronted with the choice of, do I want to take a week off, like a staycation thing, or I was thinking about going to Mexico for a few days, taking an actual vacation. And I was looking around my apartment and I had the thought like, you know what, I could go sit on a beach somewhere, but I would just come back to this cluttered ass apartment that I don't really enjoy living in anymore and the stress would resume. So why don't I take this time instead of taking a break to clear out all of the standing inventory that I haven't moved yet, clear out as much floor space as possible and then redecorate the entire apartment. And that's when the hammer dropped. My body just hit a point where it wasn't recuperating at all and I became so physically exhausted that I, I couldn't really do anything. And then I threw my neck out because I still wanted to do the last final push. I had a book auction that I had scheduled, I had input everything. And I said, if I can just get through this book auction, get it shipped out, then I can just rest completely assured and have you know, the mental space to just take a full, full break off, a full break off, a full chunk of time off because I will know that I will have moved all of my stuff that I wanted to move. Uh, I threw my neck out. I was laid up in bed for an entire day. Uh, and then after that, the chickens just came home to roost and I was wiped out. You know, it's been a couple of weeks since I put a video out. As I am still recovering, I'm starting to do a little chunk of work here and there, here and there, shooting this video. I put a video up on BookPilled. Um, I'm easing myself back into it and the new regimen of work is gonna look different. Um, I will have to structure at least one full day off per week to rest. Probably a Monday or a Tuesday. I will just have to force myself to do it. Um, famously, you know, you're supposed to take two days off. There's a reason labor unions broke their backs and went to war to give us the weekend because it was seen as a necessity and a precondition of living some kind of a dignified life or a sustainable work life. So maybe it'll expand to two days. For now, I think one day should be okay. And then pacing myself a little better and not going for 12 hours at a stint, especially sourcing. I don't do it that much anymore, but I used to do this thing where I would go thrifting and I would not stop. I would go from open to close. And I didn't do it consciously. I would do it on road trips mostly if I was out of town and sourcing. I would just hit everything uh, all in one day. One time I thrifted for 13 straight hours. That's my personal record. Uh, and don't do that. That's really, really not good to do. It's um, pretty hard on your body. Unless you're an Olympian of some kind, I don't recommend it. Um, so I'm just gonna be more cautious and more conservative with my energy. Also, I've given up caffeine. I came to the realization that I think a big part of why I, I got so tired and why I get so tired is that my stress level was and is higher than I recognized it being. When you first become a reseller, when you lose the security of the full-time job or the part-time job, when it's up to you to make your own money, it's extremely stressful. And then I think you hit a plateau and you operate with an ambient level of stress running in the background. I'm only speaking from my experience and what other people say as well, because there's so many unknowns. Your destiny is so tied up in all sorts of things that are completely outside of your control. That's, I think, why people get so freaked out every time there's a little policy change on a reselling platform, why people are so trigger happy when it comes to, you know, eBay is done, eBay is done forever. Um, and there's the, the phenomenon on top of that of people putting out scare bait videos. And please don't do that if you're a YouTuber. I really hate it when people do that. Uh, you know, is there a future in reselling? Question mark, question mark. And of course the conclusion is always like, yeah, every, yeah, of course. But I wanted to freak you out. I wanted to exploit your anxiety, your native anxiety as a reseller to get the click. 
The reason that is a bad thing to do and why it pisses me off so much when people do it is because it has a physiological effect. It really uh, can hurt people and contribute to a really diminished quality of life. Stress, when you look at stress, how it works in the body, and I, I haven't updated, refreshed these facts in a while, and I conveniently forgot about them, but I read a book about stress a while ago, and it's like pouring acid on your brain. It's really, really physically bad for you, especially to live in a chronic state of it, of unresolved anxiety and stress, of, of living in a soup of, of negative emotions, of worry and, and frustration, anger, feeling out of control. It has a hard impact on the body. That's not a good thing to inflict on other people, and it's not a good thing to inflict on yourself either. It's completely unavoidable if you are self-employed, that you're gonna feel this on some level, this worry in the back of your head of, is the IRS gonna come in and audit me? Is something gonna happen? Am I doing something wrong? Am I missing a certificate somewhere? Is eBay gonna vanish? Is my account gonna get suspended? It, there's a whole litany of 100 million billion things that can go wrong, plus just the, the wear and tear of, especially if you don't have employees, or probably even if you do, if you have to manage people, things just constantly are going wrong or going awry in your business that you're having to compensate for. But also that mental state, that emotional state can take on momentum of its own and take on a life of its own and start generating problems and self-perpetuating for no real specific reason and certainly not like a practical or a helpful reason. And I think that that was where I was, where I just became comfortable living in this state of constant worry, anxiety, frustration, anger. I think the stress level, all of these concerns, I think they amplify all of the physical consequences of doing a lot of work. I think you get more tired. I think you, you feel more pain and I think it's harder. The approach is try to calm down and not worry when I don't have to worry, not invent problems where there aren't problems really there and to supplement work with other things that I care more about, I'm reading more, etc. cetera. Uh, and also, I think that it, it is, as much as I'm talking about kind of the woo stuff, the, uh, the physical burden of labor is the really important thing and pacing yourself, structuring in breaks and responding to uh, things your body tells you to do that you ignore in the moment. Um, it's not a good habit to get into. Also, I've cleaned my diet way up. And I'm not gonna make a habit of disappearing for two or three weeks at a time anymore. It was an extenuating circumstance. I was just needing to, to not do anything, really. I just kind of sat around for a long time and uh, puttered here and there, waited for uh, my energy stores to recuperate themselves. So I hope that wasn't too rambly and that you got something constructive out of it. And I will see you back here soon.